So I understand that you're asking, what is a hypothesis? And I think that's a great question. It's a great question because the hypothesis itself is a possible answer to a question. You see, a scientist will go out into the natural world and notice patterns. These patterns will be seem to be unexplained by chance alone. So then you have to ask, well, what explains these patterns? Well, that really is a causal question. And a causal question sort of is a how question or a why question. How did this pattern occur? Why does this pattern occur? For example, you might notice the pattern that vitamin E seems to be important for human uh, health, you know, longevity or whatever. And you might ask, why is vitamin E essential? Well, you then can come up with possible answers to that question. And those possible answers, each one are hypotheses. So you can say hypothesis A might be that vitamin E is important to the immune system. Hypothesis B is that vitamin A or vitamin E is important for vision. Now, it's possible that both hypotheses are true simultaneously. You can have multiple functions. Um, but it might be that one is true and the other one's false, or it might be that they're both false. But at that point, we don't know. We just have a list of possible answers. And then so science is really all about experimenting, coming up with clever designs of experiments so that we can uh, tease out which hypotheses are true and which hypotheses probably aren't very true. And then over time, build up enough uh, evidence supporting a particular hypothesis that we can eventually take it for granted. So how does this hypothesis testing work? Well, we had our question. We came up with a, at least one hypothesis. Let's say in this case, vitamin E is important to the immune system. And now we want to run multiple experiments to test this hypothesis. Well, each experiment is going to engage an if-then-because statement where we come up with an experiment, like if I feed mice different levels of vitamin E and I subject them to bacteria that would give them pneumonia, then under my hypothesis, the mice with more vitamin E will have less pneumonia. And if that's the case, if that checks out, if that's what actually happens when I run that experiment, then I've got support for the hypothesis. To build more support for the hypothesis, I have to run another experiment. Maybe this time I don't choose mice to do it, I choose humans. But I'm not gonna feed humans different amount of vitamin E. I'm not going to feed humans bacteria to try to give them an ammonia or something like that. What I'm gonna do is grab a bunch of humans that um, say have eczema. Eczema is a skin condition that involves the immune system and those with um, some, you know, strong amount of immune system or strong am amount of eczema have active immune systems, maybe overactive, and maybe if they have less eczema, less sort of skin irritation, then maybe their immune systems are not quite as active. Well, if I bring those people in that already have the eczema and I sample their blood, then under this hypothesis, then the samples of the blood should indicate that the ones with less eczema might have more vitamin E and the ones with more eczema might have less vitamin E. And so that prediction can test that hypothesis. And if it's the case that that in our human experiment also lends support for this hypothesis, then each time we do this, we disseminate our work to the scientific community and we write about it. And then other people can then decide to test our hypothesis about vitamin E in their system, you know, in a different, in a different animal or under a different context um, and so on and so forth and in human patients with different conditions. And eventually we might get hundreds of experiments and over hundreds of experiments, we find out that our vitamin E hypothesis is never rejected. At that point, then the hypothesis um, starts becoming something that we might be able to take for granted. And that comes back to this word hypothesis. Well, just look at the word hypo sort of means not quite a or just below and thesis kind of means accepted answer to a question. So a hypothesis is just a plausible answer to a question, it's not quite accepted. Once we have lots of experiments that each give support for the hypothesis, then we can get rid of the hypo and call it a theory. And that's how we get scientific theory through lots and lots of support.
So with that, I want you to keep in mind that a hypothesis is not an if-then statement. It is important for the hypothesis to be separate from the if-then statement, because in order for us to build up confidence in our hypothesis, we need to test it. And each test will be a different if-then statement. So a hundred uh, different experiments, a hundred different if-then statements, all with the same because behind them, which is that hypothesis. One observation, one question uh, from nature, to, uh, multiple possible answers for each answer, multiple experiments to build up support for it. And if you get lots and lots of support, your hypothesis becomes a theory. So with that in mind, I hope you uh, go out and keep observing nature, keep answering, uh, asking all those questions, and start forming those hypotheses that maybe then you'll go back and start being able to test yourself.